I'm a huge fan of custom water cooling loops. That should really be no surprise. The Mastercase 5 and Mastercase 5 Pro from Cooler Master combines modularity with creativity, giving you the freedom to build it your way. Make it yours by clicking the link down in the description. Now there's a lot of different ways I could have done this video, and I could have done the quick, easy, awesome retention two minute video of here are the coolers, here are the temperatures, have a nice day, hit subscribe and like and all that junk. But you know, that doesn't really tell the whole story. There's more going on here with these coolers than just the temperatures. Now, all of these are gonna be featuring 240 millimeter radiators, which is two 120 millimeter fans, because that fits in most cases, and it really is uh, the most common size that people purchase. So I, yeah, I could have done like the H110 or gone with 140 millimeter fan units, but that's not the way we're doing it today. We're doing it with the 120 millimeters, and if you don't like that, well then just deal with it, I guess. So first up, we have got what is arguably one of the most successful coolers to ever hit the market, selling just tons and tons of units. And even if you're not into water cooling, you've more than likely seen or heard of the H100i from Corsair. So next up, we have the SwiftTech H220X, which was really remarkable when it hit the market because it's made by a company that specializes in making individual components for custom water cooling loops. So their, their, their goal and their mission here was really to take off the shelf custom water cooling parts, pre-assemble them so that you could expand it in the future, have serviceability, change the fluid, and add to it, you know, custom water cooling loop uh, type components, which are GPU blocks and radiators and things like that. And then of course, we've got the brand new EK Water Blocks Predator 240, which has the exact same reasoning of why it exists, where it's made by a manufacturer that makes uh, in-house all of their own custom water cooling parts, pre-assemble them into an all-in-one loop where you get the same quality as a custom loop, uh, but in an all-in-one, easy ease of use of an all-in-one kit. Now I could have just done temperatures and been done with it, but there's more to it than just temperatures. There's ease of use and installation, there's durability and longevity, serviceability and expandability, and then of course value. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about all three of those things. Now first up here, we've got the H100i. The thing is pretty easy to install. It's got some cables flopping around here. The fans are controlled by a Corsair's own software, uh, which plug into the pump here. And you've, you've got some things you've got to plug in. It's not too bad though. It's lightweight. Uh, construction, it is an aluminum radiator with a copper block and pump built into the top of the block right here. So the pop, pop. The block and pump are a single unit. You've got the fans here, which you have to add and install onto the radiator when you take it out of the box. Uh, installation's pretty easy. It's not too hard. You've got to attach the bracket based on which socket you're going to be using. So there is some assembly required with the socket and the bracket, uh, putting it together. And then it has a retention back plate depending on which socket you use. Now it is not serviceable. You are not able to take this thing apart. You cannot change the fluid and you cannot add to it. But it also works on Intel and AMD sockets from LGA uh, 775 and up as well as AMD uh, AM plus two plus three plus sockets. So no problems there in terms of compatibility. Now the SwiftTech H220X features thicker tubing, rubber tubing on here, which the Corsair H100i also had was rubber tubing, not the FEP flexible tubing. You've got a much heavier duty radiator because it's made of copper and not aluminum. You've got their SwiftTech Helix fans on here. And then you've got uh, an actual Lang DDC pump in here and a built-in reservoir with fittings on here that you can open up to access the fluid. You can change out the fluid, and then you've got a really heavy-duty copper block with custom lighting and a lot of stuff going on here. Now, you can actually remove these fittings and add to them. You can expand it and add a radiator or a GPU block or whatever you want to. 
Um, I feel that the wiring is a little bit cumbersome, where you have got the fan wires coming off that goes onto a PWM splitter, which also requires its own power and its own PWM signal wire here to be plugged into the motherboard. And then on the block, you also have uh, its LED light wire coming off here so that the block can light up. And then the pump also has its PWM circuit as well as its own power. So you've got a lot of cables going on here, as you can see. Whereas, yeah, you've got a lot of stuff going on, but you also have a lot of wiring that makes it very difficult to route and look pretty, in my opinion. But as I said, it is serviceable, it is expandable, it does work on Intel and AMD socket sets, but it's got a lot of wires kind of dangling off of it. And then last but not least, we have the EK Waterblocks Predator. This is the way it comes out of the box. Fully assembled, the socket uh, assembly here is ready to go. Copper water block, uh, EK Supremacy block. You've got their cool stream radiator here with Vardar fans put on. Laying DDC pump on here for moving the coolant and then a reservoir on the side right here. Uh, it's fully assembled. This is exactly how it comes out of the box. The fans are already pre-assembled. They're already wired on to this little logic board right here that controls uh, PWM as well as power to the fans and uh, the pump. And then the block doesn't have any lighting on it, but it does have holes here where you could add LEDs if you want to try and add some lighting to it in the future. And the only cables that you have to actually install for that are these two guys right here. One power cable, one PWM cable, and that is it. Rubber tubing on here, compression fittings that are much easier to access and add to if you're gonna be doing uh, additional radiators or additional blocks uh, for like a GPU block. The downside is it does not support AMD at all. And I don't think they plan on supporting AMD either. The other downside is because they use kind of an all-in-one or one size fits all for Intel sockets, if you're using socket 2011 or 2011-3, you might run into the issue where these little nubs that are designed to push through the motherboard so it can screw into the 2011 socket might not work with your motherboard. Ask me how I know. Do I need to remind us all that we drilled through a motherboard thinking that we'd be okay and we weren't? So yeah, this has full support for all sockets, but some 2011 and 2011-3, it will not work on. So you need to keep that in mind. But when it comes to ease of installation, the Predator easily decimates the other two by just mounting on the bracket for the, cheap, the CPU and then mounting it to your case and two cables and everything is powered, pump and fans, which is, trust me, in terms of ease of installation, it doesn't get any easier than that one. Now, before we can talk about value, you have to know what you're getting for your money. So we've already talked about the materials. We've already talked about how easy they are to install. Uh, we've also talked about uh, things like expandability and how easy it is to service them, et cetera, et cetera. So before we show the temperatures, the test bed is an Intel X99 motherboard, 5930K uh, overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz at 1.25 volts, which I think is pretty standard. Most people would be able to get that clock at that voltage. It's not a lot of volts, but it's also not as low as the voltage could be. So we're pumping some heat into these bad boys to really see how well they can handle it. But stress testing on a six core 12 thread CPU like the 5930K that's overclocked, uh, while also stressing the CPU cache as well as the FPU, means that there could be a lot of heat in these chips. So that's why I thought that that would be really appropriate to do it with these three units. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at the temperatures and then we'll talk about some closing thoughts on these coolers. And then hopefully I've armed you with the information it takes for you guys to be able to go out and get the best deal when it comes to buying your all-in-one water cooling units and you'll have more money left over for hookers and blow. Transition. Now trust me, my reaction was very similar to yours when it comes to the charts. Yeah, the one that performed the best in terms of temperature was the Corsair H100i. Now, I ran these tests multiple times. I spent all day, I mean from sunup to sundown, 
doing these tests in different types of ambient temperatures, cooler temperatures, hotter temperature because it got hotter as the day went on. And as you can see, by running all three of these with fans at 100%, the H100i was by far the best performing in terms of temperature. However, once we take fan control and fan speed into account, and we slow the fans down so that we can have an acoustically pleasing experience, because trust me, the H100i, with these uh, SP fans on here running at full speed, at what, 2700 RPM? Holy hell, is the thing unbearable to listen to. So it performed extremely well, but if you're okay with having a leaf blower inside your computer, those are the temperatures you got. So once we slowed the fans down on all three of these with the PWM, PWM setting in the motherboard set to silent, well, this is what we got. So when you're looking at benchmarks and things in different uh, editors or different magazines or online ed editorials, it's important to really pay attention to what the RPM speed is set to for the fans. Now we already know the Vardar fans are absolutely freaking amazing, and that really shows here once you slow down the fans. Now the Helix fans, I've actually used these independently in all-in-one wa water cooling loops before. In fact, my original white NZXT Switch 810 case with the AMD build uh, that I actually had when I started my channel was using these exact Swift Tech Helix fans, not the PWM ones, but the DC ones that I controlled and slowed down myself. But when acoustics matter, then the EK Predator 240 really stood out where it had a lot less drop off in temperatures when it came to uh, acoustics being involved and slowing down the fans than the other two did. So you really have to ask yourself when it comes to buying these units, what is it you're looking for? Are you just looking for a flat out the best performance you can possibly get at the sacrifice of any noise level, then the H100i is certainly going to be the, the unit to go with. But at those speeds, constant RPMs like that, fan running full speed, pump running full speed, uh, I really wouldn't know how long your unit would last. I would venture to say that inside of two years, you're replacing it because it died. And that's where the other two units come in because in terms of their quality of parts being used, they're gonna last years and years over the H100i. Now obviously when it comes to value, that's not something I can tell you whether or not it's worth it to you. I can tell you that personally for me, an all-in-one water cooling loop that's expandable and has off-the-shelf parts that you would use in a custom loop are much more in, uh, enticing and an incentive to me to buy than something like an H100i. If I was using the system daily, overclocking it, putting a lot of heat into it, and wanting to maybe expand in the future, the extra cost associated with that gives me a better value. Remember, value does not mean which one is cheapest. It means which one gives you more for your money. And obviously the H220X and the Predator 240 are offering that. But then when it comes to ease of use and aesthetically pleasing, to me personally, the Predator 240 offers me more when it comes to that aspect than the H220X. But today's video was not about telling you which one is better. It's about giving you the information between these three to give you guys uh, hopefully what it takes for you to determine for yourself which is the better unit for you. So I thought this was a fun video to do where we just kind of compared the three and give you some insight onto what's on the market when it comes to all-in-one water cooling loops versus expandable loops because I think the future is gonna look more like this. We're gonna start seeing all of the brands offering expandable loops like that. And that's where companies like Corsair are kind of screwed when it comes to the future, in my opinion, because remember, Corsair rebrands Asetek units, where Asetek is the one that has to come up with those designs, where Swift Tech and Predator, made by uh, EK, are all built in-house, and they control everything when it comes to those units. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video was fun for you. October has been a water cooling month where I've done more water cooling videos in October. Don't ask me why it's October. I don't know. It just happened that way. Maybe it's because October is the first cool month you get after summer and then you can start jacking up your overclocks and getting more performance and you've got to keep those temperatures in check. Well, keep them in check with these units and sound off in the comments on which unit makes more sense to you and why. Not just, don't just say, Swift Tech sucks. Because you know what sucks? That comment. Because it says nothing. It gives no information and it really makes you sound like a doofus. 
If you think it sucks, say why it sucks. And if you think the H100 is better, say why it's better. Not H100 is better because it's got a red box. I'm sorry, but some of the comments sound just that bad. All right, guys, time to get out of here. Follow on social media. If you've got any questions you want to tell me that I suck, that's okay. I do kind of suck. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.